Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2024 Core Hydration Classic, May 17th and 18th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the national championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit corehydrationclassic.com for more information. Nice to meet you. My name is David. I've been a pharmacist for 44 years. When I have customers come in and ask for something for memory, I recommend Prevagen. Number one, because it's effective, does not require a prescription. And I've been taking it quite a while myself, and I know it works. And I love it when the customers come back in and tell me, David, that really works so good for me. Makes my day. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Come see gymnastics' biggest stars at the 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships, May 30th to June 2nd at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Don't miss the excitement as U.S. gymnasts continue down the road to Paris 2024, where Olympians, world champions, and new stars vie for national titles and a spot at the Olympic trials. Tickets on sale now. Visit usgymchampionships.com for more information. Beam Queens! I'm so excited to welcome you to the world's best beam party where you'll get the opportunity to work with Olympians, NCAA champions, all Americans, and other gymnastics experts. I mean, could you imagine never falling off the beam again? We'll teach you the triple threat to make that happen. We have five rotations each day to work on your skills, drills, choreography, and mental training. You'll even get to work with a judge so you can earn those extra tens next season. So if you want to make new friends, gain confidence, and join the greatest gymnastics community in the world, Beam Queen is the place for you. Welcome everybody to the Kentucky International Convention Center. We are here for the 2024 Winter Cup Championships and this is the national team selection competition for the USA men. My name is John Rothsberger and I'm joined by Olympic silver medalist, NCAA champion, all things wonderful, Sam Patrick. Sam, exciting time of the year, really the first event that gets this Olympic year rolling. You've been through one of these years, we've both been through it. There's a different feel like at an event like the Winter Cup when it's an Olympic year, right? Oh, my gosh. The Olympic year, there's just something. I mean, you've been through it, too. There's something about waking up January 1 of the Olympic year that everything shifts mentally, physically. You just want to be elevated every single day. I remember when I was training for the Olympics, morning to night, you are a 24-hour athlete. What you put in your body, the things you say inside your head going to training, these guys are working on being their best selves. And it's the first shot that we're seeing who might make the Olympic Games for Team USA. And what uh, this is a big year, as we mentioned, there's some different events coming up. It's not just the Olympic Games, but we'll have some World Cup events that these athletes will be trying to qualify for in Baku. That's a big one, DTB Cup. 
So there's some World Cup events, Pacific Rim Championships are coming up, but then of course the Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships, the end of May, beginning of June, and the U.S. Olympic Trials in my hometown, Minneapolis, the end of June, and then you go right into the Paris Olympic Games. So it is a packed next few months, and these athletes will be feeling the pressure, uh, no doubt. And an Olympic year is something, it's something to behold that pressure, and it's not always a good feeling. <laughs> Everything you do every day, every meal you eat, you're thinking about the Olympic Games. You know, what's really exciting for me is talking to Brett McClure, who's the high performance director, and he said, we have 10 guys that have a legitimate spot making the Olympic team. Steven Nutterosik on Pommel Horse, one of the best in the world on this event. Talked to him yesterday during training about what pommel horse routine he's going to do. Um, he's not doing the most difficult routine he can do. That would be a 17-1 start value. He said this would be a 6-7 or a 6-8, and he looks fantastic so far. I mean, you can see Sam why he's one of the best. The big swing, the fluid swing, body elevated above the pommels. This is a big moment right there, though. Huge, huge routine for Steven Nedorosic. He had some major mistakes last year, and he's looking to redeem himself and show that he can be consistent in those neat settings under pressure. And he did it without the goggles. If you've seen Steven Nedorosic on Palm Horse, he's got the, the big, you know, like the racquetball goggles. I don't That's know what else why I didn't call. recognize him. Exactly. And, the, and keep in mind, so Steven, as, an, as a specialist, that's his only event, his meet's done. He can qualify to the national team here. He's got to have a start value that would have been the one, one of the top three start values at last year's World Pommel Horse Finals. And he has to win Pommel Horse. And I'll tell you what, he just did himself a real good right there by hitting that Pommel Horse routine. It's going to make it hard on everybody else as we go over to Vault Cameron Boxham. Michigan gymnast. This is a good event for him. He does really clean gymnastics. Typical Southern California scats gymnast, what you're gonna notice. Nice landing. When you land, you really want your chest to be vertical. That's similar on the men and the women's side. The Michigan Wolverine had a great career there at Michigan. Beautiful two and a half twist to open his meet. Very common vault. You know, a lot of the athletes doing two and a half twists on vault. So that means you got to do it clean. You got to land clean if you want to stand out. Cameron Bach, nice job there. And Donna Wittenberg up next on floor. First time we're going to see him and a name that a lot of us know. He has been on the scene for a while now. Such a veteran competitor. I'm actually surprised that he's competing as many events as he's choosing to do here. Yeah, Donnell's one of those athletes. And I talked to Brett McClure, the high performance director for USA Gymnastics prior to this competition. He said Donnell's got... He's got the highest potential start values of anybody in this competition, which it just comes down to them, can he execute? And it's such a give and take, right, Sam? How much risk are you willing to take? You can't fall, you know, you gotta, you gotta hit those routines, but you gotta also have the big, the big start scores. Yeah, and, and talk about an athlete that, that has that. I'm curious to see if he's going to be doing all of his difficulty in this floor team, but you can't deny a 6-4 start value on floor. This is going to be huge. Donnell out of Salto Gymnastics in the Milwaukee area. John, what makes him so much better than the rest on this event? Well, first of all, he's got such physical strength. And look at that, double twist and double layout. He ran into that, like I used to run into a, a tuck back. I mean, it was single flip. It's, it's just so quick and so strong. But that right there, his landings on floor are something that haven't always been his strength on this event. Certainly can fly high, can do all the skills, including this one. Brought it over from the rings. Maltese on the floor exercise might have been a little short on that hole. Needs to hold it for two seconds. We talk about those landings, and of course, that's important with the execution scoring of this floor routine. But a lot of these athletes you're going to see today are under-rotated, whereas Donnell is over-rotating, meaning he's taking a step or two out of bounds or in front of himself, and that's what we call a good mistake This at this pace of the season. Yeah, shortage of power for Donnell has never been an issue, which tends to lead to that over-rotation you mentioned. 
Nice full twisting double back there to finish. Just stacked with difficulty. Again, a few too many landing deductions. We'll talk about those execution um, scores as we go through the competition. A vital part, obviously, of a gymnastics judging. Shane Wiskus. Tokyo Olympian. Really kind of had a challenging last few years just with injuries, shoulder injury most recently. But this event for him, this is a big event. Not his strength, but he needs to show Team USA that he can get up on a horse and be serviceable, meaning getting a high 13 or a 14 on this event. Not going to win it, He's but st still can be valuable. His difficulty is, is pretty much the same. He said he's adding in a McCulloch, which is going to help his start value a bit. And he's really been looking to his training partners and seeing how they're training those elements and see if he can see it from a different perspective. Sometimes athletes of his caliber, you're so stuck in your ways and your habits, and it just takes one comment from a teammate that does it a little bit better for you to elevate your routine. Here is Taylor Christopoulos from the University of Nebraska, outstanding collegiate gymnast there for the Cornhuskers, and certainly somebody that could help Team USA. Good hold on that. All those strength parts on rings, got to hold those for two seconds. Good straddle plunge, a little piked in the hips. Like to see those a little straighter. Nebraska gymnast and was the NCAA all-around silver medalist just last year. How, old, how long do you have to hold those handstands for? You know, the handstands aren't, it really should be a two second hold as well. You don't want to get up there and not show control. If you get up and don't show control, generally the judges are going to take a deduction. Usually what, as we see a great finish, nails a dismount. You'll see even still rings, there's always just a little movement. And you usually like to wait for a full movement from the back to the front. And that's generally two seconds. It also gives you time to set up your next swinging skill so it, it works with the swing and you don't pick up more swing on those still rings. Riley Luce heading to high bar, which historically speaking has been a strength for Team USA, but in this quad, or the last few quads, there's been such a focus on Palma Horse that this is an event for athletes to really stand out on. Yeah, and you know, we've had some great high bar men, you know, Fred Richard recently, um, Brody Malone, he's the world, he was the world champion up until le these last world championships. So, But we've had some great ones, but the depth isn't there. And what they're looking for is that second and third gymnast to go up in the team finals. And that's where Team USA, this past world, had some athletes do that, but they need more depth on this event. Riley Luce, he, he can swing some high bar. I'm curious to see what he does here and if he can pull off this routine. Yeah, he's pretty established and, and definitely could contribute on multiple events. He's an athlete trying to break through, so this competition is a big deal for him, especially this routine right here. Big skill called a Lucan, named after Valeri Lucan, the great former Soviet gymnast. Little bit of form breaks as we. I'm just going to cut over and give you a shot of Brody Malone warming up on the horse. I will tell you that Riley Luce stuck his dismount. So good start from Riley Luce on the high bar. Now Brody Malone, a guy that we were talking a lot about, massive knee injury uh, last year. A lot of people thought that was it for his Olympic drive for this year, but he has made a miraculous comeback. Not doing all around yet, Sam, but certainly good to see if you're a fan of USA Men's Gymnastics to see him back out on the floor. Well, you, you missed it, but he had some superstitions before he does this routine. He pops one toe, pops the other toe, then wipes his eyebrow. It's almost like the routine before the routine. Hopefully it pays off for him here. Gymnasts sometimes have those superstitions. Wow, and that was a nice save on the one pommel.
A lot of skills in this routine. Not his best event, but I'll tell you what. You got a hurt lo a lower body injury. What are you going to do? A lot of pommel horse probably. And I guarantee Brody's been doing a lot of pommel horse. And it showed right there. Some form, you know, some execution errors. But, man, that's big for him. I always felt like whenever I had an injury, I would get better because of what you just said. You can't work maybe your lower body or your upper body, but you can go twice as hard on maybe your weaknesses. And I really think that that's going to benefit Brody Malone this year. Dallas Hale up next for P-Bars. Dallas trains at 5280 Gymnastics with Yule Moldauer. You saw Yule up there helping him get those bars set up. What a training partner to have, you know. An Olympian, world team member. Yule, just one of the leaders of Team USA. Now here's Dallas Hale. This is his best event. Just last year at the Xfinity US Championships in San Jose, he got sixth. Putting in that extra work until now. Possibly see some upgrades here. Those athletes that have done decently well, this is their moment to shine. Really break into the bubble early in the year. Peach to one rail, so tough. Little extra elbow bend there, but that sequence to go to one bar on that peach skill that they go underneath to the handstand, right to the heel, is so difficult. Now, I believe he was going to keep that skill on the inside of the rails. Had to do that glide straddle up on the outside. Definitely use some energy on that. He's got to work here. Double front half dismount. Took that step, but I tell you what, again, kind of kind of what you'd expect at a Winter Cup. Not perfect, but got through, hit his routine, and now he's got something to refine and continue to get better as we head into the summer. That was a solid routine from Dallas Hale. Yeah, and it's interesting. You know, it is an Olympic year, but you don't want to be 100% in Olympic shape yet. So trying some upgrades, but we'll talk a little bit more in the future. The focus is execution. This is Fuzzy Bennis from Oklahoma. This poor guy, man, he has had a tough couple of years, had an injury to his shoulder as a freshman, then lo and behold, stabbed himself in the hand, carving a pumpkin. Closed circuit to gymnasts out there, don't carve pumpkins. It's way overrated to begin with, and then you can get injuries. And then came back from that, tore his Achilles tendon, but this kid is talented. I was talking to Raj Bobzar, who's the developmental uh, program director for USA Gymnastics, and talked about how many skills and just the talent that this kid has and really said this is his time now to start to make that next step to show that he's going to be one of the top seniors as you head into the next quad doesn't you know a long shot really to make this this summer's olympic team but certainly one of the guys you look towards to 2028 possibly and being a mainstay for those following four years there you go. Well, people that know him said he has gymnastic swag. He's a skill junkie. He can do so many things. So to your point, John, it's a, an athlete that I think we're going to continue to see for a while now. I like that gymnastic swag. And that's I think that's what Raj was saying, too. Gym, love gymnastic swag. A lot of people might want to know why he's called Fuzzy. Why his down as a gymnast, and I'm, I just my feet would slam in the ground. I'd land on. I'm like, why? It also feels like a good party trick, you know. Exactly. Ian Gunther now on the horizontal bar. This guy's a trickster too. All I hope is that this is going to end up on his TikTok account after this routine. Big social media presence. Actually makes a living now off of his social media. Sam, you and I were talking to him about that. Pretty impressive. Yeah, he was being a little humble, saying he could make a living on it. But then we found out he just bought a brand new Tesla. Boom, baby. <laughs> He's a character. What a great guy. And 
started getting into social media out of boredom, didn't really think he could make money on it, and really has grown his following doing really funny gymnastics, relatable content. So for someone like us, I think it's great to see so much gymnastics being plugged on social media. Yep, absolutely. And I think even more so on the men's side, obviously the side that I come from, he's really helped get exposure for the sport through a lot of the fun videos, cool gymnastics that he's posted. You can see his coach, Tom Gleamy, in the background. We are talking about social media, and Tom comes over and says he's got all his ideas for TikTok. And I go, seriously, Tom? I, I, I'm not thinking that you're the TikTok man. Jaden Blank headed to floor. Yeah, we asked him which ones he's actually used, and none of them actually made air that I know of. So he knows. He doesn't know that, though, so it'll be our little secret. Last gymnast in this rotation. Out of Army. One of the younger guys in the competition. He graduates in 2027. Gotta hold that for two seconds, clean. Well done. This competition obviously picking the national team too, as we alluded to at the beginning of the show. 20 person national team, top five all around scores from both days. It's a two day competition. Automatically qualify onto that national team. Then the next five, based on a point system that USA Gymnastics has created. So if you score very high on just a couple events, nicely done there. Great finish from Jaden Blank. The next five go to that point system. So that's 10 spots. Six spots retained by the championship team from last fall. So we'll talk more about that as we go through the competition. One rotation done here in Louisville, Kentucky. Five more yet to go. Huh. Internet's out. Want to hear a fun fact? Elbows are impossible to lick. I meant your own elbows. Don't let bad internet ruin the game. Switch to the Xfinity 10G network and stream with ultra-low lag. Wish you would have been more specific about your elbow. Because it's only live once. Xfinity. The U.S. Olympic team trials are coming to Minneapolis in June 2024. This is the hardest team in the entire world to make. They have dreamed of going to the Olympic Games. See the best U.S. gymnasts compete to make the Olympic team. And now, it all comes down to this. Tickets are on sale now. Visit USAGymOlympicTrials.com or scan the QR code to learn more now. There's no ordinary in gymnastics. Gymnasts have to fly above and beyond normal, and so does everyone around them. Every stitch we make here at GK is geared toward helping athletes reach higher, think bigger, and accomplish more. This extraordinary approach shows in our beautiful handcrafted, made in the USA, leotard designs. Gymnasts sense the difference in the quality, fit, and function of a GK Leo. GK, be extraordinary. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today.
Welcome back to the Kentucky International Convention Center. We just wrapped up rotation number one at the senior men's day one. Here's the leaderboard. Check out the standings. In first place, Yul Moldauer with a 15-0. No surprise there. Such a, such a veteran. And in two and three, Josh Carnes and Cameron Bach. What do you think about the top three in the standings so far, John? Well, I'll tell you, a lot could change, but those top three could stay the same. I mean, they have shown that they can compete well here at the Winter Cup. Yule Moldauer won this event last year, so you know, somebody that uh, certainly I expect to see up there. There's going to be some jockeying, though. we got a long way to go, a lot of gymnastics, five events yet, and uh, in this sport, if you've around it for a few minutes, you know things can change quickly. I had the pleasure of speaking to Brett McClure. He's the high performance director, and he really explained the strategy that has been yielding a lot of positive results for the USA men internationally speaking. Of course, they medaled at World Championships last year, and they feel like they're on a really positive track. But he said, year one, the goal was to do all the difficulty. They had a bonus structure in place to really incentivize athletes to throw as much difficulty as possible with the least amount of risks. Then the next year, they wanted to still push the difficulty and increase the execution. So the bonus system was cut in half. And now they just want to increase the execution. So any of the difficulty that they had from last year and the year before that, they want to keep the same and just improving those small little things. And that's really going to help the consistency, the confidence in competition. And really, we're seeing a lot of positive results in those competitions exactly what they were hoping for in this experiment. Yeah, you know, Team USA had such a deficit in start value after the last Olympics. And, and it was five points, roughly, behind the top medal-winning team. So you, you got to imagine at home, fa a, a fall is a point. So in theory, and there's other details that go into this, but just if you want to do it on a very surface level, that's five falls that you're giving to the other teams before the meet even starts. And so they knew they had to get those start values closer. Massive improvement. They're still trailing some of the top teams like China and Japan a bit in start value, but they are so much closer that they can maybe out-execute in some situations and get up on that medal podium. Great Britain, certainly, they're that team that they seem to battle that for that bronze medal in the last couple world championships, and certainly people think it's going to be one of those teams in the bronze medal spot, but they've made themselves competitive with everyone, really. Well, for example, from Worlds, Japan's difficulty is less than two points above U.S., which is really striking distance, and to your point, that five or six points deficit from the last Olympics, a huge, huge improvement across the board, and so now honing in on that execution score, the knees, the feet, the landing, the holds, that's really the focus here at this competition. Patrick Hoops, and this ready is, to start rotation number two? And this is one of those guys, we talked about the individual spot, Patrick Hoops, saw his coach Josh Lozer right before the competition, and I asked him, how good is this kid? He goes, he's pretty good. He could be the guy, one of the guys, to push for that top spot. You have to win your event, and you have to have a start value of a 6-5 or higher. And right now, Steven Natarasek has got a 15-2. That's the number to beat. Yeah, Patrick's coming in with one of the highest difficulties on Pommel. This is his event. So really depends on what he's able to get in that start value. But in order to qualify to Winter Cup, he did a 6-5 or more difficulty. That is huge. And he is supposed to have a 6-5 here. And it was done very cleanly. Now, Steven Netarosic had a 6-5 as well. I don't, again... I didn't have the critical judging eye side by side on these two guys. I feel like Steven was slightly cleaner, but we'll see what the judges do. Taylor Christopoulos getting ready to vault, finishing up rotation one with a 13-3 on rings. This is a great event for him. I believe he's going to do the two and a half twists of vault that he won the Big Ten Championships, I believe, a couple of years ago because he hit it so clean. What's he going to do here? Oh, and that's what I'm talking about, wow. Sam. I said it, and it came to fruition. Just a small hop. I mean, textbook in the air. His body position, his hips were completely flat. No form deductions. I mean, this is going to be a big score. And here's what I hate about judging, is that that vault, 
had maybe a tenth off in landings, but the judges will somehow find six or seven. <laughs> Landon Blix, next up. Landon, part of the senior developmental team, along with Josh Carnes, two men on that that in, that particular category of national team. So certainly somebody with a good pedigree. It's really only year three for this senior development team. And again, another positive change for this men's program that they've been experimenting with. They can have up to five athletes, like you mentioned, two that have been named for that. And really the only qualification is that you have to have the difficulty, maybe not the execution, but you have to have 32 and a D score in order to qualify and get chosen. That was a good routine. Big step backwards, unfortunately, on that landing. That's going to be his largest deduction, most likely, but pretty clean otherwise. Shane Wiskus headed to rings. 13.45 on horse. This is an event for Shane that he really feels like he's had some shoulder issues, and really only since January, the beginning of January, has he felt like he could go full speed on his strength work, like that Maltese right there. That was pretty well done. He said he's not 100% back on strength, but he's close. He said that skill straddle plunge he's going to do with his legs together, which will raise his start value as well. Another Maltese there, a little short on that hold. You know, as a high-level athlete, you know you're constantly doing gymnastics in pain or just having those wear and tear aches and pains. And he said he really hadn't been able to do ring strength without pain. So for the th last three months, he has been without pain. So he's just been stoked that he can, like you mentioned, train at full force and really give it a good go. Beautiful, giant, solid handstand. Nice double-double. Here's, here's another thing that's going to drive you nuts if you're trying to evaluate this. His shoulders were low on that landing. That is a deduction. You could stick what looks like a perfect landing. If your shoulders are low, the judges will deduct. Riley Luce on floor. 13.55 on high bar. And again, he's a guy that's trying to sneak in there and really make a name, a bigger name for himself, an impact. Perfect on that landing to open. Riley is currently a member of the U.S. men's national team, part of that Stanford contingent that's basically half of the national team, and that is with Brody Malone, who now trains at Evo, who was at Stanford. Ooh, and look at that, Maltese. Jeez, that's so hard. Try that, Sam. Just lay on your floor in your living room and just push down and see if you can gonna, get your body off the ground. I'm going to start it's with one push-up, John. Absolutely <laughs> insane. He's had some success at the NCAA level, but he's also competed in a World Cup last year. He got third on this event. Two and a half to his punch front layout right there. Silver medals in the all around at this event in 2021 as well. Saw that hit high bar routine and now a hit floor routine. Really squeaked in that extra rotation there at the end. But a job well done. A little hop at the end there backwards, but two for two for Riley Luce. Fuzzy Bennis now on vault. Another two and a half. Oh. oh, and we've got our first stuck vault landing, at least that we've seen, Sam. It is so difficult. You're going so high in the air, doing so many flips, twists, and then to just all of a sudden land and not move your feet. I mean, think about that for a second. Cameron Nelson here on P-Bars, vault with that 14.05. And just to let you know, Taylor Kostopoulos, oh, and that is unfortunate, too far off to the side for Cameron Nelson. Taylor Kostopoulos on that vault that I said was virtually perfect, he took that small hop. What did he get? He got a 14.35 on a 5.2 start value, and he, so he got a 9.15 in execution. For those at home that are about that's as good, good at math as I am, that's almost a point off in execution deduction. Sam, you've seen a lot of gymnastics. Did you see a, a point off in that I vault? did not. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I'm not like the to, only one. I like to rewatch, though, in slow-mo. Maybe maybe there's some elbows on the, you know, I'm, I'm, I thought it was incredible. So that's why you and I are doing this job, and we're not the judge's job. Oh, Cameron is just struggling. 
on this parallel bar routine, unfortunately. It's not a good step in the right direction for him, knowing that he's really looking to get back on that national team. Just last year, he, at this event, he qualified for the national team. And he's got some great gymnastics. He's come a long way in the sport and a fun gymnast to watch. Got some big skills. Good finish there with that double front. Fuzzy Bennett's got a 14.65 for his vault, by the way. What's that execution? That execution was a 9.45, so he is three tenths higher on the execution score um, over Taylor Christopoulos's, which, you know, that stuck landing obviously could have something to do with that. Here's a big ring routine, Sam. Alex Diab, and I was talking about the individual event guys and Alex on rings potentially depending on what his start value is Jason Woodneck the VP for the men's program uh, said he thinks he might be very close to that 6-3 wasn't sure if it was a 6-2 or a 6-3 but he's likely the only guy that's going to push that number here at this Winter Cup so again if he can win the event and he can perform a 6-3 which we'll know here in a moment he will get himself on that national team. Well, his inverted cross is like what you see from China. They lead the standard on that event. So point it out to us, John. That right there was ridiculous. He just did a back lever and pulled himself up to a Maltese. Very nice back uprise inverted cross. I'd like to see him be just a tad bit lower, but that was pretty darn good. Legs together plunge right there. Alex is on the national team currently, so trying to repunch that ticket onto the squad. He's one of the strongest guys on rings in the world, and you're really getting a good look at why. Yeah, it looked like he struggled a little bit to find the perfect spot on that last Maltese. Actually a little low, usually guys are high, but almost a little low in that position. Gotta stick this landing, gotta stick it. Oh, really low. And that was really the only question mark coming into this routine is what is his dismount going to look like? That's the determining factor of whether he's going to win that event or not. Crew Bold up next. Michigan gymnast, formerly a Minnesota Golden Gopher, my alma mater, but that program was cut a few years ago and crew moved over to the other M. He's done a great job for them. Beautiful peach half to handstand right there. Diamondoff to can't move those hands. Every time the hands move, that's a tenth. And tell you what, it adds up quickly on the judges' sheet. Start walking around on those bars. Last year, he was part of the silver medal Michigan team at the NCAA Championships. And that was big for them. I think everybody was battling for second against Stanford, who was just stacked. Oh, and he loves it. Hopefully we'll see crew, crew on the next event, High Bar. That is an event, talk to him moments before the competition today, and, and that's an event he could win, and he can match that start value they need. And sometimes you just need a little momentum, but switching quickly to Yule Moldauer on High Bar, and what a pleasure it is just to continue watching his career. I mean, he is always full go, planning to do the all-around here today. And he told me he's going to do all-around on... Sunday as well. Doesn't have to. He'll be on that national team no matter what. But this is such a critical event for Ewell. Not his best event, but an event if he can show Team USA. Oh, a nice Coleman right there. Full twisting double back over the bar. Show the U.S. team that, you know, he could go up and be a serviceable high bar team, meaning a high 13 even. It'll go a long way for him getting on that Olympic team this summer, and that was fantastic. Not the highest difficulty you're going to see, certainly not one of the highest in the world, but, man, executed it pretty much as well as Yule can execute that routine. Heading quickly, Brody Malone on rings. I'm really curious to see this one, Sam. Again, like Pommel Horse we talked about, you got a lower body injury, you're going to do a lot of ring strength. And he said he learned a new skill right there. The Maltese press up to the plunge. Great addition. 
for Brody. Very good inverted cross. Just a tad high, similar to Alex Diabs. He did water this down, though, so it's a double layout with a full twist. They really don't want to rush his progression here. The number one thing is just to stay healthy and to keep his health Incre in high priority. Incredibly serious knee injury last year. Peeling off the high bar, dislocated his knee. He is ahead of schedule by most professionals as far as where they thought he would be. Oh. It's and they're, yeah, full twisting double back, but I tell you what, I think that's just a situation and he seems to be fine. Just, it's not important. It's yeah. not important that he yeah. shows us he can land a dismount at this point. The, what he did on the rings is the impressive part. Josh Carnes, up next on Pommels. Saw Josh on the floor, exercise outstanding job there. Can swing some very nice pommel horse as well. Beautiful flare work. Patrick Hoops, by the way, let off Palm Morris, a 14.75, so he is almost a half point behind the leader on this event, Steven Nadarosik. Well done. Remember that name, Josh Carnes. Will he be on the Olympic team this summer? I'm not saying he, he can't make it, but it's a little bit of a long shot for him this year, but watch the next four. He is going to be part of a lot of U.S. teams and very likely could be on a world team and maybe in L.A. in 28. This is Jeremy Bischoff up next on floor, scoring that 14-0 high bar just last rotation. And he's really a guy that can get the job done. He's reliable. He's an up-and-coming name as well. Graduates this year from Stanford. Currently a member of the U.S. men's national team as well. Wow, a little low on that, but savvy just to kind of dig those heels in and stay on your feet. Really working hard. I love watching when the guys land. If you look closely at their toes, it's every muscle just squeezing as hard as possible just to minimize any of those landing deductions. Seven gymnasts right now from Stanford are on the U.S. national team. That doesn't include Brody Malone, who competed for Stanford, and Kern Phillips, who also competed for Stanford, who are now training at EVO in Florida. So something good in the water up in Northern California. Tom Galimi, the head coach there, has got something good going. Yeah, I think it's interesting to note, too, a lot of these athletes have been in routine shape because it's currently the NCAA season. So this is helpful to some and also a lot more pounding on the body to others. So depending on where you are in your training, you could already be quite in routine shape versus athletes that are not in the NCAA season who are really starting their endurance and starting their routine preparation for the summer. It also makes it hard though, Sam. You're in a college season, you're competing every weekend, then you're like, all right, let's step out of the, the college atmosphere and let's jump into an individual competition. The motivation is different, not that they aren't motivated, but it also can make it challenging. Jaden Blank, up next, scoring at 13-6 on floor. A little tough start there on that scissor skill. Judges are going to hit him hard for that, but I like his swing. He's got great toe point, good body lines. Well done. You know, what I'm seeing across the board here is strong execution. That's what high performance director Brett McClure has been looking for. And it's only been two rotations, but so far there's been minimal falls. Legs have been together. The landings have been pretty clean. You know, and, and you and I were on that call with Brett and you talked about, you know, hey, we're not going to be able to add a lot of difficulty in the Olympic year, which is true. Uh, unless you've been working on something for a year already, it's tough to add a lot of difficulty. But the part that's hard is is winning with execution in the international gymnastics scene because you're not really rewarded for it. And and the what I mean by that is the great executed routines, the best in the world. You know they might get a mid eight, whereas kind of your average mediocre routines will get you know an eight two. So a couple tenths difference where you think, gosh, that should be a point difference. The judges don't see it that way, and that is what's frustrating 
for me as someone who watches gymnastics and covers it, and I know for some of these athletes that say, I want to out-execute the other guy, it's tough to do. So hopefully that plan will work for Brett. Certainly can help, but how much can it help is the question. Matt Cormier here for Penn State. And Pommels has really been a strong event lately for the U.S. Brett McClure, high performance director, told us that he's really looking that these guys do their intended routine and get credit for all their elements. And he wants to see them light on the dismount instead of heavy on the difficulty. So the dismount is really a big decider that he's hoping to see improvement here. And that was done well from the senior from Penn State, Matt Cormier. And, and it's funny you mentioned the dismount. Every time I watch a routine and I'm thinking to myself, all right, great routine, but... It's, it's kind of like balance beam. Hey, I'm having a great meet, but have you done beam yet? Yeah. You know, you got the handstand dismount. And something so easy for the judges to hit you on. It's, it's one skill. It's not connected really to anything. If you go up and don't go quickly, if you pirouette and it's choppy, they are just going to hammer you. Um, and that's what they've been working on. Well, it's a subjective sport, and so it's the last thing the judges see. We see it a lot in college gymnastics, just how important the dismount is. And so for these athletes, their routines are much longer than maybe uh, in college, but it's still just as important to solidify those dismounts. Rotation number two, heading the break now, and we'll be back for rotation number three shortly. Yep, just breathe. You and me, breathing together. If you can control your breathing, you can control your run. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2024 Core Hydration Classic, May 17th and 18th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the national championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit corehydrationclassic.com for more information. Nice to meet you. My name is David. I've been a pharmacist for 44 years. When I have customers come in and ask for something for memory, I recommend Prevagen. Number one, because it's effective, does not require a prescription. And I've been taking it quite a while myself, and I know it works. And I love it when the customers come back in and tell me, David, that really works so good for me. Makes my day. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Come see gymnastics' biggest stars at the 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships, May 30th to June 2nd at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Don't miss the excitement as U.S. gymnasts continue down the road to Paris 2024, where Olympians, world champions, and new stars vie for national titles and a spot at the Olympic trials. Tickets on sale now. Visit usgymchampionships.com for more information. excited to welcome you to the world's best beam party where you'll get the opportunity to work with Olympians, NCAA champions, All-Americans, and other gymnastics experts. I mean, could you imagine never falling off the beam again? We'll teach you the triple threat to make that happen. We have five rotations each day to work on your skills, drills, choreography, and mental training. You'll even get to work with a judge so you can earn those extra tents next season. So if you want to make new friends, gain confidence, and join the greatest gymnastics community in the world, Beam Queen is the place for you. Queen Boot Camp. <laughs> boot Camp? Is it a boot camp? It's a boot camp. Boot Camp. Yeah. Welcome back to the 2024 Winter Cup. I'm John Rothsberger, Sam Peshek, and we are joined by... 
Jason Woodnick, the vice president of men's program. Apparently, they just throw vice president out. Everybody gets a VP. You get a VP, right? I'm happy to have it. Well, Jason, thanks for joining us, man. Um, you know, you're, you're leading this uh, men's program. You and Brett kind of seemed like the faces of the program. Um, give us the State of the Union. You know, great world championships last year, but hey, it's 2024. You don't win anything in 24 based on what you did last year. You know, what? how's the program uh, looking in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, we had a historic year in 2023, and we are going to capitalize on that. We have some of the best athletes in the world, as we saw last year, and there's only uh, better guys coming up that are going to challenge those top guys i mean it's going to be a uh, drama filled exciting uh jam-packed year that is you know it's just going to be uh, historic again for us it, it really looking forward to it. Well, I think there's more athletes than ever that are vying for a spot that actually have a legitimate chance. So how do they make the Olympic team when there's such talented athletes out there competing? Yeah, so really it's going to come down to the results. Uh, you know, U.S. championships and Olympic trials are going to put our team together. Um, and it's really going to be results based. You know, those guys can go out and they can earn their spot on the Olympic team. And that was something that they really wanted. They asked for it. They wanted to know, how do I make these teams? How do I make the Olympic team? And we said, then let's do that. Let's let's make sure you know how to make the Olympic team. So, so that's they know what's going on. You guys are looking to see strong execution. What did you notice from the first two rotations? Uh, guys are looking uh, in mid-season form early in the year. Uh, some very, very good gymnastics being done. High difficulty, which we've been pushing the last couple of years, and now it's the execution is, is coming, and, and it's right on time. I mean, it's only going to get better throughout the year, but um, some very, very clean gymnastics being done here in the first couple events. Talk about Shane. We just saw him do his vault right there. He's hit three in a row here at this competition. He's struggled a little bit the last year with injuries and such, but coming on stronger this year and right at the right time he's he's rolling right now you know we when Shane is healthy and locked in he's as good as anybody in the country and the world and uh, he looks pretty dialed in right now and I know he's feeling healthy he feels good so that's you know a huge part of it talk about a guy with upside though Donnell Wittenberg on the rings right here he was on the world team a couple years ago did not compete on the world team last year but upside in particular on event rings where you guys could really use his help right yeah, I mean, he is a world finalist. He is one of the best ring workers in the world, has been for many years. Um, this is his bread and butter event. I mean, I think for him, he can do this routine in his sleep, uh, but it's incredibly hard, uh, and, and he just makes it look way too easy. He is ridiculously strong. Like that, I yeah. think most people, when they do push-ups, they push their body up. When Donnell does push-ups, he pushes the earth away. Yes, I'm pretty yes. Sure. Here's Curran Phillips from Evo on Vault. Wow. Nice. Somebody that you're hoping can, can start to contribute. Three event guy, but three great events, right? Yeah, uh, he's a vault parallel bar, high bar guy, and without question, one of the best parallel bar workers in the world. His difficulty is among the top two or three in the entire world, and his high bar is getting increasingly better. Um, yeah, he is a guy who can really be a game changer for us uh, with what he can do on those three events. Absolutely. Triple. So hoping to increase his difficulty on vault. We just saw a Yurchenko two and a half, which is a five two star value. So adding a Yurchenko triple is really increasing his difficulty by four tenths. Yeah. You know, he's got a few months to keep playing with it and see what happens, see where it goes. You know, that extra half twist, while it, while it is just a half twist, it's a little more dangerous of a vault. Um, so we obviously want to watch how that goes, but he's got a few months to keep working on it. Rithik Peary getting ready to go for Michigan on high bar. Michigan last year, I don't know if you recall this, but uh, Jordan Gerenstrom, is co the coach at Michigan, said they had four of the top five score finishers on high bar yeah. at last year's U.S. championship. I didn't realize that until he told me. In fact, I probably should have checked it because he could have been lying. But is that true? Yeah, it's, it's high bar university right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you put Fred Richard, one of the best in the world, Paul Judah, who's one of the cleanest high bar workers you, you, you're ever going to see, uh, Crew Bold is exceptional on high bar. Uh, that's three. I'd have to look at who the fourth was, but uh, I would believe that, yes. No question. Well, he's probably making up the fourth yeah, he, he might. Jordan would do that. Yeah. So we don't put it past him. Yeah. I should, I should do my research, too, on that one. <laughs> <laughs>
This is really a huge factor for USA to be successful again this event right here. So what makes a great high bar worker? Uh, you got to put some big release moves on the bar. I mean, that is, you know, what everybody looks for on high bars, those monster release moves. You got to let go and you got to re-grab it. Uh, we look for one dismount only, as we say, right? Like you want one dismount. You don't want to get off that bar more than once. Yeah. Um, and hitting handstands, right? Like good line hitting handstands on the non-release skills. Um, that's really what you're looking for in the best, the best high bar, guys. Dallas Hale on floor and talk about USA as a country and the growth and evolution of really the teams that have been competing internationally. And this is an event that really has increased difficulty. But what's the importance of staying in bounds and sticking landings? Uh, that is pretty much everything on floor, right? It's all tumbling. These guys are going to do five, six, really, really hard tumbling passes. So that's a lot of landings, right? You know, five or six different landings. and everything comes down to your landings. You land a little too deep in your knees, that's a, a deduction. You land with your chest down, that's a deduction. So it's all about landing upright, you know, uh, not moving those feet, taking extra deductions, taking extra steps, uh, and that, that's floor. I mean, these guys are doing incredible tumbling. To try, Trying to stick is really hard because of how powerful they are. Um, so you just have to, you have to be able to control what you're doing. Yeah, that's frustrating though too, because you and I have both seen Yul Moldauer, for example, do a floor routine and stick every pass. Yeah. And maybe take a step on the on the one at the end and it's maybe a one tenth step and then they find a you know point one point two off. Yeah. That that to me is the frustrating part as Cameron Nelson goes here on high bar and you know is that something you need to fix in the sport? It's challenging to to try and explain, to try and understand, right? You see what looks like, you know, to the naked eye, a really good landing, and you're, and you're like, wow, that was that was fantastic. But okay, maybe he landed with his chest down, and it wasn't as upright. Maybe his feet were a little too wide. You know, they're supposed to be, you know, shoulder width. You should be able to get your heels together. And it's just an education thing that a lot of people don't really pay attention to and don't know. I mean, we in the sport know it, but if you're just generally watching, it looks great. So yes, I mean, a lot of those those deductions, right, we're looking for perfection. The judges are looking for perfection, and what looks perfect to one person may not look perfect to another. It's, it is challenging, for sure. Cameron Nelson, unfortunately, some trouble here. Big triple back. Big dismount. Finish. Big dismount. We'll see too many triple backs off high bar these days. That was done well, unfortunately, struggled on the landing there and had a mistake early in that routine. So unfortunate back-to-back -back mistakes, missed routines rather for Cameron Nelson. Kai Mora on vault at 13.6. It's Kai's first meet as a senior. So getting a taste of the senior competition. I know there'll be a lot of eyes, certainly on the Olympic team this summer, but those closest to the sport, curious to see who's going to step up after the Olympics. Garrett Broughton here on the steel rings. How's it looking? I mean, the team, I know we'd love to talk about this team, but can we expect them to, to pick up the baton in, in 2025 and, and carry us to, to L.A.? Is there some, some guys to look forward to? I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, after the Olympic year, you always have turnover. You have guys who are going to walk away from the sport, and usually those are some of your top guys. But we are our junior program and our young seniors are exceptional. And, you know, again, we have been pushing difficulty at all levels to try and compete with the best teams in the world, and that's top down. And so you're seeing it from these younger guys who are now breaking into the senior category, and they're already challenging our top seniors, right? You're looking at Asher Hong or Fred Richard. That's exactly what's happening in our program. Yeah, I had to endure, endure Paul and Morgan Hom and Sean Townsend at the end of my career. I'm like, yes. seriously, I need to get out. <laughs> yes, yes. Crew Bold, next up on High Bar, you talk about the difficulty from the youth level. How? How have you guys changed that philosophy to really encourage more difficulty from the younger athletes? So, we implemented a... Oh! oh. And that's not and to jump in here. That is a big fall for Crew Bold. Yeah because he is a guy who could have won this event, yeah. and he does have the start value, yes. the 6-2 potentially, to meet that requirement to get himself on the national team, but winning high bar with a fall like that is, is pretty much a, a, 
a non-starter. Yeah, yeah. largely for free. In, yeah. in 2023, he was the U.S. high bar silver medalist, so he does have some medals and accolades on this event already. That was a gigantic casino, by the way. Huge. Uh, but, I mean, that is part of the risk. He's trying to upgrade and do more difficulty to try and earn that spot on the national team. And, and you know, that is sometimes how high bar goes, unfortunately. How's, how's Fred Richard doing? He's not He's good. eating. I know a lot of people back home know who he is. Got it that second time. Nicely yeah. done. They're, they're probably wondering where he's at. You know, why isn't he here, do you know, and, and how is he doing training? Yeah, I mean, he's he's been competing for Michigan uh, all year, but uh, he's got some, you know, minor things health-wise, injury-wise, but he's good. I mean, he will be ready uh, come, come a couple months from now for championships, trials. He'll be ready to go, and he probably could have competed here, uh, but, you know, play it safe. He's already got his spot locked onto the team uh, for national team to go to championships. Chips, so um, make sure he's healthy, and that was really the goal for him. Cool bowl finishes up. Qualifying the champion, U.S. championships from this competition, can you do that, and what do you have to do to be one of those people to to go ahead and punch your ticket to that event? Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a process. Uh, obviously, number one, make our national team. Uh, if you make the national team, so uh, we have guys who are already locked in. Our world's team is already locked in. Um, there will be five all-arounders. The top five all-around guys will get locked in. The next five by our points program will get locked in. Um, so making our national team number one from this meet. And then um, there's potential for, you know, some other points guys to also work their way in. Um, after some other events happen, uh, we will, you know, round out the, the U.S. championships from uh, development nationals. And so there's some of those guys that have to get in NCAA championships that will some of those guys will get in. So we may end up coming back to Winter Cup. Um, but for sure, the easiest way, make the national team. J.R. Chu getting his pommel horse routine done. Not too bad. Here's another big floor team, Connor McCool from Illinois. This kid can tumble. And he can yes. stick landings. It's incredible. He does. He's so much taller than what an average gymnast looks like or is. And even just walking past him, it's incredible that he can get so high in the air and very dynamic. But I also think it's what makes his floor look so cleanly executed as well. Yeah, he is a floor vault guy. You know, this is one of his... Oh, of course, right on cue. Uh, that was... It, it, this has two two events that he uh, is trying to earn his spot on the national team through those two events. Oh. An unfortunate landing there. Daniel Rivera, the head coach at Illinois, loves this guy. Said he's such a great team member, team leader. <laughs> tough, tough pass right there. Three and a half. He was the 2023 Core Hydration Classic floor champion. So looking to clean up some of those landing issues we saw there. That's where the execution comes into play. I want to hear what you, you have to say about this guy right here because he, he's, I think everyone say a long shot this summer, but is he one of these guys pay attention to 25 and beyond? Because he's got the talent, right, to go big time. Josh is unbelievably talented. He can do almost every skill out there. Um, just natural ability, natural talent. Um, if he can stay healthy, he is he is going to challenge our, our top guys. And that's been kind of the issue with him the last couple of years. It's just injuries, injuries, but he feels good now. He looks good now. He's having a solid NCAA season. Uh, so hopefully that can continue. And, and yeah, he's, he's going to push uh, and fight for, for the team, for sure. He said he's really tried to take the pressure off the hit and really has been helping him in competitions. And hopefully... Wrapping up that consistency, which is what you guys are hoping to see from the selection committee. Ian Gunther now on pommel horse. Ian currently seventh place after the first two events. He's been on national team before. He's a strong all-around athlete, but really doesn't have like that one specific event. He really needs to hit six for six here. Doing a good job so far early in this competition. I'm not sure what he did right there in the middle of that routine. That was some hocus pocus because he was supposed to go back to the middle and didn't. Somehow kept it going pretty darn well, all things considered. You can see the tape on his elbow. He told us before the competition that that might actually keep him out of parallel bars. 
and pommel horse today, but he's out there competing as Yul Moldauer with his new opening pass. Big upgrade for him. Yul, one of those guys that he can stick everything, and unfortunately the first two passes is taking hops. Man, so good at landings. It's just so incredible the amount that this guy competes. He really started winning and meddling all the way back in 2016 and just never stopped. And high performance director Brett McClure said, you know, sometimes he, he worries since he's an older athlete about the amount of rest, but he said that he really just loves to compete. And he knows that now he should get worried when he stops competing this much. Yeah, Yule is a guy who thrives on training and competition. He just loves it. So how does he rest and recover? Uh, he does. You know, he takes time. He takes his downtime. But he is someone who doesn't like to come down too much. He likes to just be in routine shape. And his coaches, you know, work with him on that. And he likes to be in routine shape all year long, all the time. But he does. It is planned. It is strategized. He does work on, you know, coming down when he needs to. He'll be 28 this fall, this uh, sept, actually uh, August rather, 28 years old. Man, that's that's a dinosaur, pretty much. I mean, getting up there in dinosaur territory. Yeah, but he he just the, he can train. He can keep training. He's he's kind of a, a phenom, honestly. Jaden Blank here on rings. You know, he's part of Yule's part of that Bundesliga in Germany. Um, and I think the pro, the pro, the top 12 pro yeah. uh, circuit in, in France as well. Some more guys starting to get interested in that. Your thoughts on, on how that might impact Team USA? You know, I think any opportunity that our guys can get to and maybe earn some extra money, uh, I think is fantastic. You know, we want to make sure it doesn't interfere with what we're doing, with our domestic competitions, with our camps, you know, with things like that. But if they have the opportunity to go do it and it's fun for them and, you know, crowds, the crowds are crazy over there in Europe. The, the, the environment is different over there. It's just, it's just a great opportunity for them. And we, we love that. Um, you know, so we work with them on their, on the scheduling and making sure it doesn't interfere with what we're trying to do as a national team. But we're all, we're for it. We're all for it. Could you see a world where the U.S. has a team or a league in a similar way? Would love that. <laughs> Would love that. All right, whoever is watching, let's get it going. Yeah. To get some sponsors. Some sponsors, some donors, you know, let's make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. But would love that. Would love some sort of professional league. You know, these guys train all year. They're, there really is no off season. You know, they're, they are professional athletes. So, yeah, it'd be amazing. That was Jeremy Bischoff finishing pommel horse. He was in sixth place after the last rotation, a little over a point outside of the leader, Cameron Bach. Now, this guy, Tate Costa, out of Illinois. Daniel Romero talked to us yesterday, and he could not say enough great things. Saw his parents, actually, at Starbucks in the hotel today. Talked to him about this young man. Walked on at Illinois, and Daniel Romero says he's never seen a harder worker in his life. Actually, has to rip him off the equipment sometimes because he's like, no. <laughs> you've had enough. You've got to go. And he said, to, he said to us, he goes, mark my words, next year he's going to be a national team member. Is he on something or is he on to something? I love that. I love that. You know, that's the guy that's going to, he's going to push not only the guys at Illinois, the guys on his own team, but he's, he's going to work his tail off and he's going to push, you know, our top guys. I love that. That's what you need to do. Well, iron sharpens iron, really, just on these college teams, which I think is a benefit for the U.S. men's athlete to have a team to train with and push each other, whether they're currently in it and being considered for one of the spots or maybe in the future, like Tate Costa. John, you mentioned that they have to rip him off the equipment. Daniel said he could have, like, seven rips. His hand could be falling off, and he would want to do one more <laughs> turn, which... I think is the ultimate compliment for an up-and-coming athlete. Oh, and he had a good floor routine until that moment. Just a bummer of a finish there. But hey, Jason, hey, before you go, your daddy. I am, I am a new How's daddy. The little guy doing? He's awesome. He's eight weeks, eight weeks today. Um, Julian, he's right? Julian, yeah, he's amazing. He's my, my buddy. It's, uh, I, I mean... There's nothing like I, I I don't have words right like it's we're eight weeks in it's just been completely life changing but it's amazing I mean he's he's the best.
You don't know yeah. love until you hold your child in your hand, right? Gymnast, you got him in lessons yet? It's a little early. We're a little early. We're a little early for that. A month or two old. We're a little, it's not. Let's, how about some abs? Maybe some sit-ups. We'll start. We'll start with walking, right? We'll start with walking. Maybe smiling. Like we'll start with that first, and then we'll work our way into gymnastics. But yeah, of course, he's going to do some gymnastics. I mean, there's no yeah. question. Yeah, got to do it. Yeah. Well, enjoy parenthood. Nothing better. Thank and, you. And uh, enjoy this run. I know you got a lot of pressure on you guys to perform in Paris, but you've done a great job, and we're looking forward to watching you. And thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thrilled to be here. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. All right. We're. Th- through three rotations. We got three more to go. Great competition. Great guests. We might have more guests coming up. Stick with us. Huh. Internet's out. Want to hear a fun fact? Elbows are impossible to lick. I meant your own elbows. Don't let bad internet ruin the game. Switch to the Xfinity 10G network and stream with ultra-low lag. Wish you would have been more specific about your elbow. Because it's only live once. Xfinity. The U.S. Olympic team trials are coming to Minneapolis in June 2024. This is the hardest team in the entire world to make. They have dreamed of going to the Olympic Games. See the best U.S. gymnasts compete to make the Olympic team. And now, it all comes down to this. Tickets are on sale now. Visit USAGymOlympicTrials.com or scan the QR code to learn more now. There's no ordinary in gymnastics. Gymnasts have to fly above and beyond normal, and so does everyone around them. Every stitch we make here at GK is geared toward helping athletes reach higher, think bigger, and accomplish more. This extraordinary approach shows in our beautiful handcrafted made in the USA leotard designs. Gymnasts sense the difference in the quality, fit, and function of a GK Leo. GK, be extraordinary. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. men's competition it's day one we're halfway through seeing a lot of good convention center i'm samantha peshik alongside fellow olympian john roethlisberger a guy who knows a good amount about men's gymnastics i don't know if i know a good amount about anything sam let's just you're being generous thank you well, we got a Prevagen memorable moment for you. Yul Moldauer was the 2023 Winter Cup champion. Check this out. He's just an incredible all-around performer. He just never stops. He's been winning medals, been on the scene since 2016, veteran competitor, really setting the tone for all of the success for the U.S. men and Hopefully, he's hoping that you're going to see another win from him here in this competition. Again, he's three for three in tonight's competition and doing pretty well in the results so far. Yeah, he's leading the way right now after three events. 
and he's an Olympian. He's a world individual medalist from 2017. He's a member of the, the team that won a medal at the World Championships this past year. Keep an eye on him. Write that name down, Yul Moldauer. I know you guys at home are you're putting your fan sheet together and who to follow and who to get to, get to know. This is not a sport that is as well known as, as the big ones in the country, but uh, Yul Moldauer, a name you want to keep track of. He certainly could be part of that team in Paris that could help the U.S. men win a medal there. First one they will have won since 08, should they get on that podium, and he also could be an individual medalist. Great on a couple events, so we will definitely uh, be watching him. Brody Malone chalking those bars up right now, and he is chalking them up for his teammate, Kern Phillips, who's going to be in the leadoff here. So I got to know, is it similar to women's gymnastics where every guy likes the bars a little bit different? I mean, it's it's crazy. I remember back in the day, so they use they use sugar water, they use honey, they use caro syrup because you want to you want to be able to hang on to the bars. But I remember back in the day when that that first kind of became a thing, where gymnasts were doing more underbar skills. Underbar meaning you're underneath the bar, and grip became more and more important. There were some countries that were like a NASCAR pit crew. They would go out there and sand down the bars, and they would chalk them, and they goo them up, and and then if you're following that athlete, you're like, man, I hope I like it the same way they do because it's going to be a job. So they each have their own formula. You know, you spit on your hands, you use a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And and it's tough. I mean, they go under the bars a lot more than they used to, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Big part of it. But this guy right here, Sam, one of the best in the entire world, no exaggeration, can do a huge parallel bar routine and he's got a lot of unique skills that are called upper arm skills you can see the pads on his arms he's going to lay those part that part of his arm on the bar numerous times i also just want to know if gooing it up is a professional term or it is it actually okay. is it's uh it's in the dictionary gooing it up and, and right there those first two skills that one right there front uprise diamondoff and that is a front uprise makuts that whole sequence is impossible. It's, a human being should not be able to do it. In fact, that front uprise Diamondoff, I worked for years, Sam. Years. No exaggeration. Because I knew how valuable it was. I never made it one time. It was depressing, but he does it so easily, this routine. Well, Unbelievable. It's possible that he has the highest start value on this event. I mean, it's also just looking so clean. It's depending on how he's feeling, but this routine's gonna go anywhere between a 6-6 and a 6-9 star value. Huge. That was absolutely insane. If I'm if I'm picking things apart a little bit, probably could find some execution error in the legs, maybe hand movements, but pretty pretty unbelievable. Cameron Nelson trying to get things back on track, had a rough parallel bar and high bar rotation, but this is a great event for him. He was the 2023 NCAA floor bronze medalist from Ohio State. Talk to his coach here, Casimiro Suarez, who competed for Cuba back in the 80s. One of the guys I really looked up to when I was a young kid doing gymnastics, Suarez, he's a big dude. And in fact, I watched him walk next to Cameron. Cameron's one of the bigger gymnasts competing here as well. But he got dwarfed by Casimiro Suarez. He's such a big guy, but man, could he do gymnastics. So fun to watch. You can see him there on the left side of the screen cheering on Cameron. This is a, really a watered-down floor team for what he's capable on, capable of. He's been working a triple pack on floor. Just huge skills. I mean, even that combination pass right there is just done so well. Good rhythm. He can do the triple back, too. I've seen him do it. It's outstanding. Great air awareness to just find the ground on all those difficult tumbling passes. So a few landing deductions got through it. Again, midseason for these college gymnasts, and this is a tough kind of sidestep to that collegiate season as Garrett Broughton does his vault. A little shy on that rotation. When your feet hit the ground, you want to see the chest vertical for a controlled landing. Brandon Dang up next on Pommels. And we heard some great things about him from Daniel Ribeiro as well. And I, I love the story about 
Brandon Dang. But first, before we get to Brandon Dang, it's Noah Newfield. Yeah, I think we're waiting for Brandon Dang's score. Actually, I think we might have missed his floor team. Yeah, they're scoring Brandon Dang. So we missed his floor team. This is Noah Neuf- Neufeld from, from Cal Berkeley. I'm curious on Brandon Dang's score because Daniel Rivero said he is the best freshman he has ever seen. He's a pommel horse specialist. Brandon's, and uh, Daniel said Brandon wants to beat his record for individual titles at Illinois. It's 43 is what Daniel Ribeiro got. He was a pommel horse guy as well. We'll be interested to see if he can do that. But here are the interesting part. He's one of those horse specialists that could potentially get that individual spot. Oh, 14-2. Unfortunately, he is a point behind the leader on this event, Stephen Nederosa. It doesn't look like that's going to happen, but fun gymnast to watch in the future. Well, he knew that he was going to have to beat the world champion in order to obtain that spot. Sometimes you need some good fire after a meet like that. So here we go with Noah Neufeld from Cal Berkeley. That skill right there is called a Sone, named after Mark Sone, a Penn State gymnast. It was not very common skill for a long, long time, but now it's worth a lot of points, so you see many more gymnasts doing it. Yeah, I really like watching men's gymnastics just to learn all the skill names. So for those watching, most of you most likely know that how different men's and women's gymnastics is, but they have a complete list of different names for their skills, and it's, it's always a fun challenge for me. Josh Carnes. Oh, and that was not the plan. He's looking at his hands. He's supposed to do a two and a half twist and actually can do a triple twist on ball. But for him to almost bail out of that and still land upright, I mean, dang, that is tough to do. Yeah, that's unfortunate for him. Josh was in the top six. And here's Fuzzy Bennis, and this could be a bigger team. Talk about him being a big-time trickster. Look at this, the casino. We saw Crew Bold try that and have an error, but Fuzzy grabs the bar, and there's the Coleman. Wow. This is one of his best events. And you got to understand, that, that steel bar is about eight feet off the ground, so they're flying a good... 12 plus feet in the air over a steel bar. It doesn't move if you hit it, Sam. I mean, it is death defying gymnastics, and to be able to perform it like this big time, double twisting, double layout. And you can see that score 12 9 5. That was from moments ago. 12 9 5 on high bar. A 12 doesn't sound great, but very close to a 13. 13 is a good score on an event that's tough to score big on. Brody Malone now. So I'm on rings and pommel horse earlier. This is a very good event for him. Talk to him about his dismount on this. He says he's doing a double pike dismount. Not sure if he'll do the double front again because he doesn't have the range of motion in that knee. You can see the knee brace under the red there. And if he lands short, it could be devastating, so he cannot afford to have that type of mistake, so that may affect his start value slightly if he has to do the double pike instead of the double front, but still. And you aren't seeing his full right. upgrades here at, at this competition. Brett McCurr, the high performance director, said it's not the end of the world if he's not on the national team from this event. Health is the number one priority and, of course, meddling at the Olympic Games, John. And look at that. Some doctors probably thought he wouldn't ever do gymnastics like that again, land like that, certainly not this soon, but my goodness, don't doubt Brody Malone. He's back and he's only going to get better from here. Now Landon Blix from Michigan on floor. Big, big opening pass. Yeah, again, one of those guys on the senior development team and they really say that he is the perfect senior development guy that they had in mind when they created the program. Said about 75% of the senior development guys break into the senior national team. And if 
he makes the national team from this competition, then they will choose new athletes for the senior development team. And really the whole point is to bring them in and develop the execution and the consistency. And they're really noticing that it's paid off for him at the NCAA level. Beautiful so far. No new fellow on horse, by the way, a 13-5. Fuzzy Bennis on high bar. We saw that 12-9-5. Brody Malone, a 14-8-5 on pair of bars. Oh, and what a triple twist. My gosh, he just pulled the parachute in the middle of that. Outstanding. Donnell Wittenberg now on a big event for him. You want to stand out big on certain events, and that is an event right there. That vault, not his best. He's capable of a rate Rise Kwan, which is the hardest vault being done in the world. It's a double suit with a full twist. Had some trouble with it at World Championships a couple years ago, but if he can get that back, that could be a ticket puncher for the games this summer. Austin Padgett, on high bar. Austin out of Pride Gymnastics. Nice. Coleman, full twisting, double back over the bar. The Kovacs, just a straight double back over the bar. Write those down. You guys can impress people at the next cocktail party. I want to learn a Kovacs. I, I learned one. I, I caught it a couple times and said, there's no way I'm doing this in a competition. <laughs> I'm out. And some of these guys have two multiple in their routines. And, and really, if you want to be the best in the world on high bar, you have to have at least two of those double flipping skills over the bar, it seems like, these days. And now they're flipping and twisting over the bars, which is just incredible. And they're connecting them now. And in fact, I saw a, a picture, and as we see Cameron Bach, a video of uh, Fred Richard from uh, one of his coaches here doing a casino, the full twisting double layout over the bar, to a Coleman, the full twisting double back over the bar connected and I may have might have choked a little when I saw it. I'm like, are you, are you are you kidding me right now? Let's talk about Cameron Bach though. He's an athlete that was an alternate for the 2020 Olympic team. He was on the Pan American Games team gold. He got fourth in the all around. He's been really consistent, but he's got to keep hitting. So if he can put all six events together in one meet, and if he can do it two days in a row, then he should have no problem remaking this national team. Yeah, I really think he's one of the people that you kind of expect to make. Currently sitting in third place in the all-around, just half a point behind the leader, Yul Moldauer. And one thing I love about Bach is he's, he's really he's a clean, executed gymnast. I mean, even look at his fingers and look at his arms when he has his arm movements. Not everybody does that. Very important to him. Seems obvious, but not everybody is, this, is that clean. It's in the details, and, and really it's those execution emphasis that the selection committee is looking out for, especially right now, as they're trying to put piece together the Olympic team. Taylor Christopoulos now, the Cornhusker. Fourth place after the third rotation. This is an event. He can fly high on this one. You want to see ice in your veins on this event? Especially now, they're adding the difficulty, they're focusing on the execution, but they want to see that these guys salute and they have no doubt in their mind that they're gonna hit this routine. This is beautiful routine so far. That handstand position early in the routine was very well done and then the big release move really clean. Just a few minor foot breaks, slight body position on that first Takacha, that's the layout over the bar. Other than that, this is as clean a high bar routine has been done in this competition so far. Double, double, laid out. Oh. Like a toothpick in a club sandwich, Sam Peshek. I mean, he did that well. Dang. And he knows it, too. Chuck Schmelka, John Robinson in the background there. His co coaches, they love it. Brandon Wynn now on the still rings from Stanford. Brett 
McClure, the high performance director, said the execution on this event has gotten better. He said it still could be stronger, but he wants to see them start sticking those dismounts. They have to execute them. He said there's China on rings and then there's everyone else. So let's see if we can start seeing these athletes have more control on those landings, maybe even some sticks. It's just such an easy deduction to take. It's, it almost seems more so on rings than other events. I don't know why I think that, but you know, you land low with the shoulders, you take those hops, you could have a six-tenth deduction on what's a otherwise clean landing. Shane Whisk is here as we're wrapping up rotation number four. Shane's had a solid day so far. Currently sits in fifth, less than a point out of first. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, we talked to him yesterday. He said, this is the best I've felt since Tokyo time. He was visualizing. You can really tell he's going that extra mile to be his best self here. We talked about Cameron Bach and his execution. Shane, I feel like, is out of that same mold. Just the great toe point. Just doesn't want to do a skill unless it looks great. And that's the mentality that they're hoping transcends the U.S. men's culture. And you really see that starting to permeate, starting from this quad, really. This is a great event for Shane, one of his best in this routine. Outstanding small hop there at the end, but a guy that is in the top five right now. Got to be in the top five in the all-around if you automatically want to make it onto that national team, and that is only going to help him. It's been four rotations so far, two more to go. We've seen some good gymnastics, some great execution, and we're going to be back with more in just a little bit. Huh. Internet's out. Want to hear a fun fact? Elbows are impossible to lick. I meant your own elbows. Don't let bad internet ruin the game. Switch to the Xfinity 10G network and stream with ultra-low lag. Wish you would have been more specific about your elbow. Because it's only live once. Xfinity. The U.S. Olympic team trials are coming to Minneapolis in June 2024. This is the hardest team in the entire world to make. They have dreamed of going to the Olympic Games. See the best U.S. gymnasts compete to make the Olympic team. And now, it all comes down to this. Tickets are on sale now. Visit USAGymOlympicTrials.com or scan the QR code to learn more now. There's no ordinary in gymnastics. Gymnasts have to fly above and beyond normal, and so does everyone around them. Every stitch we make here at GK is geared toward helping athletes reach higher, think bigger, and accomplish more. This extraordinary approach shows in our beautiful handcrafted, made in the USA, leotard designs. Gymnasts sense the difference in the quality, fit, and function of a GK Leo. GK, be extraordinary. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today.
Hey there, and welcome back to the Kentucky International Convention Center. We've got a big weekend of gymnastics, and it's starting strong with the senior men's competition. It's day one. It's a two-day competition. Let's check out the standings. After rotation four, Shane Wiskus is in that top spot with a 56-4-5. And then right behind him is Bill Moldauer and Cameron Bach. But we got some big names, of course. Two more rotations to go, but it's looking good so far. And lucky for us, we're now joined by Brett McClure, the high-performance director. And it's a big meet. We've had a good conversation before the meet started yesterday and, and before this meet started. You want to see execution. There's a lot of guys in this mix. What did you like so far from the first rota rotations? Uh, yeah, a lot of good gymnastics. Definitely execution has been a focus, um, but you can also see the nerves. You know, this is is a high pressure event. These, these guys know it's the first part of the process to qualify to the Olympic Games. So uh, I'm happy to see some of them shake that off and get into a rhythm. Um, it's a great top five so far and two rotations to go. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. What yeah. didn't you like? Oh man, and there were a couple. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> there were a couple falls. Um, obviously, Yule's pommel horse dismount. Uh, we've been working on that pretty regularly to try to fly it up to the handstand. So it was a little disappointing to see him get stuck there again. Uh, but you know, I'm sure he'll come back with a vengeance on day two. But Shane Wiskus is really coming out of the gate strong. I know he's been battling injuries. He said he hasn't felt better since the Tokyo times. What are you seeing from an athlete like him? Yeah, he's looking pretty steady today. You know, nothing perfect. Starting on pommel horse is uh, a little nerve wracking, uh, but he handled it well, right? He stayed on, got through that first event, kind of set a rhythm right into rings, vault. Uh, P-bars was a big event for him uh, to get through in order to maintain that consistency and then he's got really strong events remaining in high bar and floor exercise, so he put himself in a good position. We've been talking a lot about the positive changes. I'm calling them experiments, but it seems like the experiments are going well, so let's call them positive changes. And one of the things you mentioned was the funding that the national team gets at a larger scale. Can you talk about how that affects these athletes right here? Yeah, it's it's incredible that you know USA Gymnastics has been able to figure that out. It's been something um, we've talked about for a lot of years, and just to be able to fund more athletes uh, at some part of the scale is a, is a big deal, you know, for them to be able to focus a little bit more on gymnastics and maybe not about the cell phone bill. Taylor Burkhart, getting this rotation started strong on vault. This kid's a, a trickster. Wow. Like, yeah. he can do a lot of gymnastics. What? When do we see him at the top of the standings, though? What, what's the, the ingredient that he needs to really focus on to get up there? He needs to hit six for six. Uh, he's he's so awesome on a lot of events, like that Yurchenko half on front double full off with a small step. He can do a Randy. He can do another vault. You know, like he. Not showing 100% of yet uh, because he's got to hit six for six, and once that starts happening a bit more often, then you're going to start to see the upgrades. He's such a talented gymnast. Toby Lang, a freshman at Nebraska on floor exercise right now, from just down the road from where I'm at in Knoxville. Young man's been out to camp a few times. Nice talent, part of that 2022 Junior Pan Am team that won gold. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see him uh, competing with the seniors now. You know, he's got to step up. He he tried out last year, I believe, at the Classic. Uh, didn't have a great competition. Now he had a whole summer to train uh, and come back at Winter Cup right now and see what he can do against the rest of the seniors. Yeah, he was ninth in the all-around at the Core Hydration Classic last year and hoping to improve here at Winter Cup. Taylor yeah. Burkhardt for that vault, by the way, of 14.65. Wow. You told me before the meet started that a focus is staying in bounds and sticking landings on floor. Have you seen a good trend with these athletes competing here today, or is it time to get back in the gym? <laughs> uh, <laughs> loaded question yeah, right there. Yeah, I mean, it's always time to get back in the gym and improve that. Um, but I am seeing a little more attention to detail. Yule's floor exercise was awesome. Uh, you know, he's always been great at floor. Uh, but, yeah, it's just going to have to keep sending that message 
to these guys for the next few months. What is it, 150 days? My gosh. Till Paris. Hard to believe. That's 150 opportunities to improve your stuck landings. Yo Moldauer, number two in the all-around currently, defending all-around champ. Here he is on rings. How big was he at that World Championships? I know, you know, Fred Richard gets a lot of attention, and the guys that won some individual medals as well, but his leadership, you know, can you put a value on that? No, it's priceless. Uh, he just loves the sport so much, and he loves his teammates, and he wants everyone to be successful. He was the leader. We didn't even have to pick a captain or choose a leader. It just happened organically. He stepped up, set up the group chat, set up meetings every single night in the hotel to talk about what their plan was for the next day, how they're going to handle everything, and how are we going to support each other. And that camaraderie uh, really showed up at World Championships, and they were extremely successful. Yeah, I want to... I want to ask you about something I think you may have told me or someone else at the World Championships is Yule finishes up on rings. Yeah, there it Talk is. Talk about stick and landing, yeah. man. That is textbook Yule Moldauer right there. You said there was a shared document that the guys have created, and I don't know if it come, came from you or the guys themselves, that they go to Worlds and they say, hey, this worked and this didn't work, and this is something we experience. And even in, in training, they have things that they've been sharing to kind of push each other and improve each other. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. We had a national team camp last summer in France and it was a great opportunity for us to really come together decide what our goals objectives you know uh, expectations were or where do you want to, our culture to be and that's kind of where the Google Drive uh, was created and it was event by event national team expectations national team basics you know a few bullets on you know what uh, Team USA is on those specific events and they nominated athletes to be in charge of each one of those events uh, so it really spawned from the athletes themselves which really is way more powerful than anything I can do or tell them to do uh, because if it comes from within you really believe that you can achieve mm -hmm. that's amazing I know you guys have been mentioning the, the importance of letting these athletes take ownership of their training so that they get bought in and just any of those little things that maybe feels little on paper turns into a bigger deal at World Championships where you see guys like Yul Moldauer stepping up into those leadership roles and feeling comfortable to have the support from you guys at the top level to make those meetings and, and encourage the guys on an interpersonal level. Yeah, I mean, it's 1% difference, but that could be the difference between podium or fifth place. Wait, Fuzzy Bennett's just finishing up floor. I'd love to get your thoughts on him. He's, he seems like one of those guys. Keep an eye out 2025 and beyond. I am blown away on his comeback story. You know, he's had a tough go since he got to OU. Uh, a couple injuries, one very, very significant injury that he's had to come back from. And just, I'm shocked to see him in the all around, let alone in the hunt. Fourth place right now. Yeah, right in, in the hunt, you know, to, to be the Winter Cup champion in 2024. Um, that's incredible. It's inspiring. I'm just, I'm so proud of him for never giving up. Riley loose on ball to the two and a half twist. Brett, there's your stuck landing. There it is. That's so high. I thought he was going to get stuck in the air. Yeah, he, he's like a cat. You know, you throw him out of a window, he'll find a way to his feet. Have you tried? Have you done that? <laughs> I, that might not be uh, something that's in the, the handbook. That's not on the shared Google Drive, I don't think. Yeah. Josh Carnes now, tough vault, last rotation. Here he is trying to recover on parallel bars. This is, I like Fuzzy Bennis, I feel like Josh Carnes, oh. unfortunately, he's going to make me look like a fool right now, but one of those guys, too, like, has so many gym skills and such great gymnastics. Maybe 2025 and beyond is his time as well. Yeah, I mean, he is so talented. The, the thing that kind of holds Carnes back are the injuries. You know, yeah. he has just had such bad luck um, with dealing with injuries. He was a phenom junior uh, national team athlete and uh, went to Penn State. He's super young uh, con considering the rest of his class. Uh, but, you know, I think he's got a lot of potential. If he's healthy and he's hitting six for six, he is right there in the conversation making any team, really, because he's that good. Jordan Kovac now 
on the still rings. Jordan out of Premier Gymnastics. A little tough time there on Pommelers, obviously, with that 10.3, but trying to recover here on the still rings. Brett, what are you hoping to see from these athletes on rings here? Uh, man, we gotta we got to hold our strength positions just a little bit longer. It seems like once we get to the spot where it's no deduction, you're about half a second short. Um, so you, you've got to settle in faster, hold that two seconds, get out, and then stick the dismount. Um, that's, that's something that drives me crazy. It should be one of the events where it's the easier stuck landing and you just overcook it or you try too hard and undercook it and then you know, you're know taking that step here and there, three up, three count. Each guy, that's three to five tenths you can make up in final team score if you just stick those landings on rings. The importance of a stick is so universal no matter what type of gymnastics you do. What, talk about the mechanics of a stick. What do you want to see from these athletes? How can they stick better? Well, they have to trust that their dismount is executed perfectly, right? If you're just trying to stick the landing, you typically lose out on that technical expertise performing the dismount, trying to stick the landing. So I always tell them, look, if you just focus on what your proper technique is and drop into the landing, the stick will happen. You can't force it, right? It's all about the execution of the technical performance of that dismount. Yeah, sometimes it's a catch-22 when you try too hard to stick a dismount, it can cause other problems. Problem. So exactly. focusing on the technical aspects of a dismount first is, is really great advice. Josh Carnes on that parallel bar team had some trouble. 13.05 there. Yule Moldauer on the still rings. 14.15 for his effort. That is a, a good score. Anything above a 14 on rings and you were doing something right. But your leader after four rotations was the Golden Gopher, by the way. <laughs> Minnesota Golden Gopher, Shane Wiskus, and here he is on the high bar, currently with a half point lead over Yule Moldauer. I mentioned that 14-1-5 from Yule on the still rings. That means a 13-6-5 or better will keep Shane Wiskus at least a tie for the lead. Big moment right here. Right. Training this full routine. He, he's got some upgrades. They ha he hasn't competed the full connection yet. Hoping to see it right here. Yeah, he should connect this right into another one. He is working okay. an additional laid out to Kacha. It probably would come right before that. Not doing it today. How big is this routine as far as making an Olympic team for Shane, this event in particular? Huge, huge. And, you know, he's been having some issues with the casino, which was that first release move you saw at the beginning of the routine um, for the last few years. And so for him to come out here, day one, Winter Cup 2024, stick that landing, hit the casino, stay on the high bar. It was a little tentative here and there. You could kind of saw some of the form breaks, but that's okay. You know, I think the main objective for day one at this competition was hit a routine, clean it up day two. Look, here we have Dallas Hale on rings. Look like maybe a little gas was leaking out of the tank on that high bar routine, <laughs> but hey, for Shane, another hit set. We'll find out shortly if it's enough to maintain the lead as he'll get ready for one more event yet to go. Yeah, that'll be pretty close. You know, 13, 6, 5. Um, you know, the, the, over I like, under. Go I, ahead, I, call it right I, now. We're I'm in gonna, Vegas. I'm going to say it's going to be a tenth shy. I, I agree. I'm going to go with two and a half tenth shy. Sam, do you want to get in on this? Uh, you know what? I'm I'm agree with Brett. Oh, on this one. Tenth shy. All right, we're going to go with tenth. I'm going two and a half. Oh, he's over. Oh my gosh, we're all wrong. Shit, you had your chance, Sam, to make us both look bad. 13.85 for Shane Wiskus. That'll keep him ahead of Yule. Obviously, some other gymnasts to keep an eye on. They could jump up there, too. But between those two guys, you see Dallas Hale finishing his routine. With another stuck landing. There I guess go. they're listening, they Sam. know that you're sitting right here because uh -huh. they're responding pretty well. Oh, man, this guy coming up on high bar. I don't know if you... Um, Got a chance to watch his parallel bar routine, 15.95. Huge! Absolutely 
incredible. There's a gymnast uh, from China that has scored 16 plus. I think he's the only one. And then this guy, Curran Phillips, was just knocking on that door. 0.05 away from that coveted 16.0. Let's see if he can rock out a high bar set here. And, and he's an interesting guy because he's doing three events. We saw his vault, a good vault. Not necessarily that big, huge start value, but obviously parallel bar is great. So how important is this routine now to add a third potential three up three count routine for Curran Phillips in a, in a team final situation? Huge, huge. And he's very good at high bar. You told me that there's a lot of stock weighing in on him for this routine. His goal is to be top three here. Showing off those big releases. He's pretty clean and has very smart, good construction on these routines. Again, hitting this routine to his full potential will really help his chances for an Olympic Games. Wow. Oh my he did God. It. The high performance director liked it, Curran. Wow. He's right over here. He's taking notes. <laughs> That's exactly the kind of routine you want to see in a three up, three count situation. Last event, you know you have to hit. If you hit, you're on the podium. There's no pressure like it. We were lucky enough to experience that last year at World Championships. And now I think he wants a piece of that action. Taylor Christophilis quickly on floor. Fifth place after the last rotation, but I just want to go back to Kern Phillips. Can Kern do a more difficult vault? Do you think he will do a more difficult vault come championships and trials time? Yeah, he can do the triple full. He can do the triple full. I think, again, day one, Winter Cup championships. Let's just, you know, hit some routines, settle in. And then who knows, maybe day two we'll get to see that debuted, or maybe it's going to be one of the international events or U.S. championships. Um, but I know he's been training it, and it's been looking very, very good. Well, we'll see what the judges do with that high bar score, because that is a big, big-time routine. Having three events where you potentially could put up you know, close to the highest score for Team USA, High bar, you know, you got the likes of Brody Malone to deal with, but I mean, that that's going to be hard to leave off an Olympic team, I would guess. Well, Curran Phillips, 14-3 on high bar. I think that might put him in first. That should and be the Taylor's score. floor routine here is awesome. This is one of his best events. Taylor made national team for the first time ever at this meet in 2023. It was uh, awesome to see him kind of break through. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get to make the national team at the U.S. Championships, but you know he spent the summer training um, trying to make sure that he finds a way back on team. 13.75 for that Taylor Christopoulos floor team. Now another guy that you know has got a huge upside bread is Donnell Wittenberg here on Parallel Bars. Absolutely. This guy is a beast, and he has so much experience, such great leadership, teammate, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy that could make just an individual skill, like pick a skill. Wow, another stuck that, landing. That was amazing. And make it look easier. Like he did the peach half to handstand right there. You did a great peach half to handstand. But he, his, he travels at light speed to that handstand. It makes it look way easier than it is. Yeah, it looked like he was floating. It was, it was a great routine for Don Don, and he's had a very good meet today. So let's see if he can um, put it together one last time, last rotation, and then another great day on day two. It's also just so impressive to see the dynamic power he brings to not just every event, but every skill he does. It's just this explosive energy coming from him. Yeah, and he makes it look so easy. He's, he's that strong. I mean, what you see on TV is actually his pure strength. It's phenomenal. I think he's actually stronger in real life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I see him on the screen, and it looks phenomenal, but watching it face-to-face -face, like yesterday in training, it is just unbelievable, you know, how big his muscles are and just how high he gets on all of his skills. My son wears Superman pajamas. Superman yeah. wears Donnell Wittenberg pajamas, just to <laughs> be honest. Michael Artlip now from Penn State. Senior Nittany Lion here to finish out this rotation. What's important on P-bars? 
You know, one thing a lot of people overlook are just the hand movements, right? You need to hold a solid handstand without shifting your hands as best you can. Each minor little shift is a tenth of a point. It can add up really, really quickly. And you'd be surprised how difficult it really is to not move your hands. I mean, oh, it back takes... Oh, in, in, back in my day, Brett, we'd move our hands all the time. It yeah. wasn't an deduction. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do a handstand where you didn't move your hands. But, uh, Brett, thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's, uh, we're looking forward to a great year. You had, guys had a, an incredible world championships and historic world championships. Um, you know, no pressure, but don't, don't screw it up this year. <laughs> I mean, we're set up, right? We're set yeah. up for some greatness. It was awesome. You know, those guys did a phenomenal job at World Championships. And I think the biggest takeaway from that experience is just knowing that you can do it, right? For a few years in a row, we kind of stacked up a, a couple losses and you start to doubt yourself. Like, is this ever going to happen? And now they know that it's possible. And hopefully uh, they took that, put it in their pocket, use it as motivation for the next go around and, you know, stay the course and we'll see what happens in Paris. Well, good luck. Brett knows. Brett knows about winning medals on the international scene. 2004, part of that silver medal winning team. I was there to watch it. It was amazing. Uh, you're doing a great job. 20, I think, 20 I, years ago. That's incredible. That's hard to believe. <laughs> I think you'll have your job at least for a few more years. Don't worry about it, man. You're in good, you're in good shape. Well, thanks, Brett. Thanks for joining us. And uh, good luck the rest of the year. We'll see you around. Thank you so much. Fifth, uh, sixth rotation. Sixth rotation? I think it's sixth last rota Last rotation coming up. Oof. Don't go away. We're going to breathe. Yep, just breathe. You and me, breathing together. If you can control your breathing, you can control your run. Come see the stars of USA Gymnastics at the 2024 Core Hydration Classic, May 17th and 18th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Cheer on Olympic medalists and world champions as they compete for a trip to the national championships. Watch the excitement when Team USA's future legends take the stage. Tickets on sale now. Visit corehydrationclassic.com for more information. Nice to meet you. My name is David. I've been a pharmacist for 44 years. When I have customers come in and ask for something for memory, I recommend Prevagen. Number one, because it's effective, does not require a prescription. And I've been taking it quite a while myself, and I know it works. And I love it when the customers come back in and tell me, David, that really works so good for me. Makes my day. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Come see gymnastics' biggest stars at the 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships, May 30th to June 2nd at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Don't miss the excitement as U.S. gymnasts continue down the road to Paris 2024, where Olympians, world champions, and new stars vie for national titles and a spot at the Olympic trials. Tickets on sale now. Visit usgymchampionships.com for more information. excited to welcome you to the world's best theme party where you'll get the opportunity to work with Olympians, NCAA champions, all Americans, and other gymnastics experts. I mean, could you imagine never falling off the beam again? We'll teach you the triple threat to make that happen. We have five rotations each day to work on your skills, drills, choreography, and mental training. You'll even get to work with a judge so you can earn those extra tents next season. So if you want to make new friends, gain confidence, and join the greatest gymnastics community in the world, Theme Queen is the place for you. 
Welcome back to the last and final rotation here at the Senior Men's Day 1 competition. We were lucky enough to just be joined by the High Performance Director, Brett McClure, but quickly looking at the leaderboard, Shane Wiskus hanging on to that first place spot right above Yule Moldauer, only a 2 tenth difference. So this last event is important. And rounding out the top three is Cameron Bach with a 69-3-5. So really, really strong scores here in the top three. And of course, that four through eight spot is pushing here in the last and final event. Let's take a look at the Xfinity 10G powerful performance of the night. And this one goes to Fuzzy Bennis. Check this out. He's dynamic, he's powerful, and he drills the landing. He's got that gymnastic swag. He's a skill junkie and can just do so many things. What a delight he's been to watch throughout this entire competition. Coming back from all of those injuries, doing well in the all-around standings. I mean, what a guy to look out for, John. What a guy. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a vaulter. <laughs> is that a thing? Can we make that up? Can we go with that? He, I don't know. He is going to be a fun gymnast to watch, you know, and he is right in there at this competition. He's currently sitting in the sixth spot, actually tied for fifth with Donnell Wittenberg. So, you know, trying to get in those top five spots. Remember, top five all-arounders from both days of competition. You guys will all be here Sunday, right? If you're listening right now, watching right now, you're going to be oh, here yeah. with us on Sunday. You can't hear them, but the answer was they, yes, as in collectively. Affirmative. So the top five. So he is right there with that automatic spot to the national team. So outstanding young gymnast and a fun one to watch throughout the coming years. Now here's Connor McCool, a new vault we've been told by Daniel Ribeiro. Should do a half on double twist off and he is a big time foreign vaulter for the Illini. Unfortunate, just did not have that block, Sam. It looked like off the table, just missed that block a little bit, and then looked low. You tell right away, looked low in the air, and just was not meant to be there. Didn't look like he was running very fast, but again, there's different styles on vault. Some athletes need to run as fast as you can to hit the vault, the springboard, and some athletes like Parma Cool like some more laid back approach into that springboard, but again, just didn't quite get the block. But here's a surprise second vault for you. Yeah, doing two vaults. If you want to be a medalist at a world championships or an international event, you've got to have two vaults. And I think, too, that the Yurchenko vault, I think, feels like a vault you, you control the run. Not that the run isn't fast and powerful, but maybe you control it more than a normal entry vault. Would you agree? Yeah, normal entry meaning meaning you, you don't do the round off before the vault board. You just jump and land on the vault board, which is what I did. I don't think you did, though. You just did the Yurchenko style vault, correct? I did a front handspring front pike, so both options back in the day, but this is a front entry vault. Gave it a little more, more ump, but again, you know, you can tell he's a little disappointed. A little bit. <laughs> he stuck the vault. Ugh. Normally people would be excited, but you know, two vaults, he really wanted to nail that first one, and unfortunately was not meant to be. Yeah, you and I have both been in those situations where you have a mistake and then nail the next skill. And as excited as you want to be, it, it's honestly so frustrating because you know that you could do it perfectly if you just had one more try. How many times have athletes just yeah. said, can I just get one can more I get a try? Mulligan? How about that mulligan? Can I turn one in? <laughs> Cameron Bach now, he was in third place coming into this final rotation. He has won the all around at this competition before. A couple years ago, I believe 2021, he was the all-around champion here. A good day today. He is just slightly less than a point behind Shane Wiskus. About seven and a half tenths of a point behind Yule Moldauer. So this is a good place to finish, though, Sam. Rings an event you usually don't fall off of. What you do in practice, you typically get up and do. Might come down to the, the landings. We cut over quickly to Yule Moldauer. And this is big. <laughs> he needed to hit a strong ball, and I'm not sure he could do that any better. Back to Cameron Bach, and you know, I, I spoke to Brett McClure, high performance director, about Cameron Bach, and he said, man, this guy's just got ice in his veins. You never see too much emotion from him, good or bad. He's just steady start to finish, and that's what we've been seeing today, really in line with the reputation that precedes him. 
And just to give you kind of a, a, a view of the landscape, if you will, that you'll mold our vault. I think Yule's going to be in the lead. You know, Vault is a higher scoring event. He executed that vault perfectly. And he's going against Cameron Box ring score, which rings is going to tend to score slightly lower. I do not see him certainly making up that 7.5 of 10. So it's going to really become down to Shane Wiskus' floor routine. If he can hold off Yule Moldauer now. That was well done, though. Small hop on that landing. And, and Cameron's got to be excited about his performance today. Ian Gunther on P-Bars, finishing out his day one competition. And I'll tell you what, I mean, there's no routine I'm more excited to see. Oh, come on, Ian. Right on cue, off the side of the rails. I was going to say there's no routine I'm more excited to see than young Ian Gunther's parallel bar routine, Sam. And he heard you say that. Tom Galimi, coach there, that coach right there, coached me into... The year 2000, my final Olympic run. Great job at Stanford. Won numerous national titles, trying to keep that streak alive. This year, Ian gets back on the bar. Ian's got a unique dismount, Sam. I'll let you guess on what, what it's called. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, he is man, struggling. He's really struggling. How difficult is it to... Uh, no, oh. he, and he's done. Yeah, yeah, he's pointing to that elbow. And, and, and he did tell us before the competition, I might not do pommel horse and parallel bars because of that elbow and it's just not not worth it at this point of the year which is always so frustrating when injuries come into play and that's you know whether you're a men's gymnast a women's gymnast injuries is the biggest culprit to hinder your progress and so it's really important to follow the program and know that this is not the final step in the olympic journey this is ignacio yockers and he is one of those horse specialists this young man can swing and on cue big break right there but one of those athletes trying to win this event but steven natarasa currently has a stranglehold on the top spot and i think he's going to keep it with that form break from yockers but certainly a young man that amongst the best in the world on this event. Really, we've got about four specialists, at least in this event, that really can hang with just about anybody in the world. And it's an unfortunate break. You know, I was a little frustrated at the end there. Yeah, Yawkers got a silver medal on that event last Winter Cup and Pommel Horse bronze medalist at the NCAA Championships just last year. But Shane Wiskus, this is the routine we've all been waiting for because Yul Moldauer did his job on vault. It's up to this routine for Shane Wiskus on who is going to hold on to that number one spot. He needs a 14-1-5 to tie Yul Moldauer for the top spot. Now, again, it's a two-day all-around competition, so... This will only be the halfway point, but it is a nice feeling, I'll tell you what, as an athlete, to see your name at the top of the list. 14-1-5 is not an easy score. You've got to hit, and you've got to hit clean. But so far, honestly, Shane Wiskus, in my opinion, on pace. But he didn't do any hard tumbling. Hard tumbling means doing your tumble, tumbling passes on competition surface. We all, as gymnasts, call it hard tumbling, but didn't do any hard tumbling to the beginning of the month. He said he's feeling really confident in his ability and trying to train smarter. So doing more trampoline work to develop the air awareness. And man, whatever he's doing is working for him. Those landings are really solid. Oh, he's going to do it. What a day for Shane Wiskus. We talked to him coming in the meeting. He doesn't want to do this. He wants to put the expectations aside. Doesn't want to do this for anyone else. Wants to do it for himself. Yeah. Being an Olympian at the at the Tokyo Games, I think, puts a target on your back yep. for the next four years. And, and he's just, he went out and did his job today. Jeremy Bischoff finishing up his competition on P-Bars. You know, it's really exciting to see those athletes, Yul Moldauer, Shane Wiskus, who are definitely in contention to make the Olympic team, doing their best when the best is needed. And that's oftentimes been a culprit for Team USA, but that competition consistency is, is really strong out of the gate this year, and it's great to see that. Jeremy, seventh place after the last rotation. Not going to push the leaders here on day one, but certainly in contention for a top five position. It's behind Fuzzy ben Venice and Donnell Wittenberg, who currently sit tied in that spot. 
Parallel bar is generally a higher scoring event in men's gymnastics. So a clean landing oh. there. And I was about to tell you a clean landing there, and he will put himself right in the hunt. Man. Yeah, instead that door just got slammed open for someone else to step in the top five. Man, it's always such a bummer to, to end the first day on that. Matt Cormier finishing on high bar here. What event did you like to end on, John? Man, it's not high bar. <laughs> when everything's on the line and you got to let go of that bar and grab it again, it's it, the pressure is on. You know, honestly, Sam, I I never really thought about it. You know, I never thought, oh, I don't want to start here. I don't hey, want to finish you gotta here. You got to do them all. You I know, know you got to really you matter. Do. And if you're in the zone competing and you block out all the noise, it almost doesn't matter. I know I used to start. I like to start and help. Beautiful finish there, double twist and double layout. I like starting on rings because, again, if you hold on, you do your routine, hopefully you get a clean landing on the dismount, and it kind of gets the blood flowing, kind of settles the nerves a little bit, and then you can get into the nitty-gritty later. Start on rings, though, you got to end on pommel horse, which is a little bit nerve-wracking. As we see, Cameron Nelson did not compete pommel horse in the last rotation, but here he is on rings finishing up. Good looking Maltese right there. Maybe just a half second longer would be nice on that hold. Brett talked about those hold positions. Gotta make sure you're getting the most out of those holds. Two seconds. Very nice legs together plunge there. Shane Wiskus, by the way, a 14.55. Does that do it? He will be the leader after the first day. By the way, Josh Carnes. I'm looking at the wrong event there. I apologize. Yule Moldauer will be in the two spot, four tenths back. Again, two-day competition, so there's still an opportunity for a little switcheroo at the end of the standings, not just in the all-around, but of course the individual event titles, which means a lot. They're trying to make the national team. Donnell Wittenberg finishing up here on high bar. The switcheroo, the old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. That's switcheroo. a technical term. It's in the code of points. Yeah, I always like to say it's, it's never over till it's over, so some of the athletes that we saw mistakes from are going to hope to get a little redemption on day two. So Donnell Wittenberg here. This is not typically a strong event for Donnell. I mentioned he is tied for fifth with Fuzzy Venice who's finishing on horse. So horse and high bar for men, the two lower scoring, typically the lower scoring events. Fuzzy Venice, by the way, at 12-1-5. Unfortunately, he let off Pommel Horse in this rotation. So again, door wide open for Donnell to secure himself in well into the top five. Again, you're seeing those strengths applied to the high-flying elements. Super dynamic, quick twisting, finds the landing. Nice job today from Donnell. Last year didn't go exactly how he had planned, wanted to be on that world team, but coming back nicely here. Now Blake Soon, this is a guy, I talked to him about him and Curran Phillips going head to head on this event. Blake outstanding here as well. They got a little friendly rivalry. He's got a long way to go to beat Curran today and that was a mistake right there. Was not supposed to go to the upper arms on that skill. Well he has, has a bronze medal on this event from championships. Oof. Not going to be his day here though. He's going to be disappointed with this. You know, it's so frustrating. You do these routines so many times in training, but there's just a different feel when it's competition and the green light goes on. you got to be able to handle that pressure. It's still early in the season, but a good learning experience to learn, you know, what mistakes were made and how to fix it for next time. Yeah, that's too bad for Blake soon. Alex Diop here on floor. Saw Alex in the still rings as well. Does the still rings vault and floor exercise. 
He is your top finisher on the still ring. He's got a 14.75 there. This is a, a watered down floor tee, and of course, still coming back. He hurt himself last year at this competition. But when he's fully healthy, he is just phenomenal on floor and vault. Of course, rings. Nice wide arm handstand right there. You can see he actually had to turn his head to the side a little to, to do the rollout. That's really how you need to do it. If you want to do it right. Wow, nice double layout at the end of a routine. Tough dismount. Yeah, you see that sting mat? That's not a deduction. Just that extra padding. Of course, he's coming back from injury. Toby Lang now on Palma Horse. Cornhusker, his teammate Taylor Kostopoulos. He is one of the, the leaders of this competition. A 13-2 for his Palma Horse routine moments before Toby mounted. That'll put him in fourth place currently, just behind Cameron Bach, who did get in back into that top three with that ring routine. 13-6 for him there. This looks decent here for Toby so far. Good finish. <laughs> he likes it. It's great to see the talent across the board on Pommel Horse. Again, really tough event. What are you thinking? Last event, wanting to finish strong showing. Chalk it up for your last routine. What's going through your head? I'm trying not to think about much of anything. I'm trying to relax. I'm taking a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, try to let the tension out. And I always used to, the thing I always used to do, Sam, is I close my eyes and I imagine my home gym. Mm. And it's funny because when I was in my home gym, I close my eyes and imagine the competition. Mm. So I try to put myself in my home gym where I've done it thousands of times. And sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. Riley Luce is hoping that it worked here on this last event for him. Riley Luce needs to be really tight Eesh. on this parallel bar routine. He again is in the top eight. He's sitting in eighth. Some of those guys ahead of him have had some trouble. Fuzzy Bennis at 12-1-5 for his routine. So an opportunity to inch up those standings and this looks spectacular so far. There's that hand movement Brett talked about. That is one-tenth. That was a nice job, though. It'll be interesting to see how far up. I do think that will move him up the standings. I don't know how far. Not going to touch the leaderboard, but very likely could get him as high as possibly even fifth place where there is currently... Donnell Wittenberg actually sitting in that spot as Garrett Broughton finishes his night. He was the 2022 NCAA High Bar Bronze Medalist for Air Force. This is a strong event for him. That skill right there called the half talk. That needs to go right up near a handstand. Big release coming. Oh, and just too far away. That's the casino. We saw that one get crew bold. We saw some other gymnasts successfully complete it. I'll tell you what, Sam. I'm going to do the old back in my day right now. But back in my day, you said, hey, someday somebody's going to do a double layout over the high bar with a full twist. I would have said, dude, I don't know what planet you're from, but that ain't ever <laughs> happening. And now they only do, not only do that, they do it with a double twist. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the same. I watched Sunisa Lee train this morning, her new skill, uh, laid out Jaeger with a full twist, and I, I feel the same way. If I was training, I would just be in awe, and thank goodness we're sitting here and not actually <laughs> training anymore. I, I don't know how I would have made it today. Yeah. I don't think I would have. These guys are... They're physical freaks, and they're, the strength and power they have, I just don't know if my body could have ever had that. I, I must have hit it at the right time, thankfully. Finishing up strong here. And again, two-day competition. You know where he is hoping to improve. 
Beautiful and double twisting double A out there at the end. Taylor Burkhart, last athlete day one this competition here on P-Bars. Had a really good day so far. Had that outstanding ball when Brett was in the booth with us. Talked about just the skills this young man has, our, our legit gymnastic skills. But he just needs to start to learn how to hit in the meat and hit clean. And he honestly, he will be one of those contenders, one of those automatic qualifiers for the national team and maybe much more. Yeah, he was on the junior national team for several years and then went through a rebuilding phase and now back on senior national team and hoping to stay that way. Thank you for tuning in to day one of the senior men's competition. We saw some incredible, incredible gymnastics from these senior men. You could tell that it's an Olympic year. We'll be back in just a short while to check out the standings, see who is at the top of the leaderboard, and who needs to step it up for day two. Huh. The internet's out. Want to hear a fun fact? Elbows are impossible to lick. I meant your own elbows. Don't let bad internet ruin the game. Switch to the Xfinity 10G network and stream with ultra low lag. Wish you would have been more specific about your elbow. Because it's only live once. Xfinity. The U.S. Olympic team trials are coming to Minneapolis in June 2024. This is the hardest team in the entire world to make. They have dreamed of going to the Olympic Games. See the best U.S. gymnasts compete to make the Olympic team. And now, it all comes down to this. Tickets are on sale now. Visit USAGymOlympicTrials.com or scan the QR code to learn more now. There's no ordinary in gymnastics. Gymnasts have to fly above and beyond normal, and so does everyone around them. Every stitch we make here at GK is geared toward helping athletes reach higher, think bigger, and accomplish more. This extraordinary approach shows in our beautiful handcrafted, made in the USA, leotard designs. Gymnasts sense the difference in the quality, fit, and function of a GK Leo. GK, be extraordinary. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. An incredible senior men's competition here at Winter Cup. Check out the standings. It's a two-day competition. So as of now, Shane Wiskus is in the lead with an 84.85. Yul Muldauer, 84.45. And rounding out the top three, Cameron Bach with a very, very nice 82.95. And really great performances from four through eight, hoping to jump into the top three. John, we saw really spectacular 
athletes here across the board. We saw good execution, which is what Brett McClure, high performance director, wanted to see from these athletes. What did you think day one? I thought it was great. I'll, I'll be honest, Winter Cup, Winter Cup's oftentimes a mess. <laughs> All right, let's just let's call it what it is. You know, it, it's in the middle of the season. It's an awkward time. If it's the elite season, it's the beginning of the year for yep. some of these college gymnasts. It's the middle of the season. It's just a hard event. I've said to, to a bunch of coaches before this, I go, I don't think anyone will ever look back at their career and go, gosh, I sure miss Winter Cup, just because it's such a challenge physically and mentally. But I'll tell you what, this Winter Cup so far, day one, these guys look as good as I've seen at a Winter Cup. Not perfect, not where they're going to be later this summer, but really where I would think Brett, Brett and Jason Woodnick from USA Gymnastics both would want them to be. They've got some things to work on, but, you know, Ewell and Shane at the top looked fantastic. Cameron Bach as well, and I'm excited for the final day. Again, making national team is important, but, you know, bigger fish to fry down the road, but winning Winter Cup, it's it's a nice thing to do, and, I, and I'm curious to see how this battle ends up on Sunday. And I think they're gaining confidence through this experience. I mean, Com uh, uh, creating competition confidence as an alliteration for you is the most important thing heading into big competitions like world championships like the Olympic Games and for these athletes to come out and and do their best when they're saluting I think it says a lot about it and really just adding stock to their mental psyche heading into the biggest year of possibly their gymnastics career yeah I think you nailed it on the head again maybe not the, the Olympic routines they want yet but you collect confidence, right? Confidence isn't just something you get in a day. You don't just show up and have you know, inconsistency for months and then show up and, and you're at the top of your game. It's a collection. It fills that bottle, right? You want to fill it to the top, and that confidence over the course of time matters. And, hey, Shane and, and Cameron and Yule, the three at the top, yeah. and not just them, but, but uh, outstanding job. So. It's, uh, we got more, more today, though, right, Sam? Yeah, more no. today. At 7 p.m., we have the junior women's competition. And that's always exciting. That's where I started my career. So I have... Did a, you? How did yes, it go? Uh, How old did well, you I made the come? national team when I was 12. Oh, so, well, you know, okay, Bragg, and I'm sorry. It I was asked. a really, really <laughs> fun competition. So you're going to see some hot shots that might be in the next quad. So young talent there at 7 p.m. But it's not the end for these senior men's. Don't forget to mark your calendar because on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, it's the senior men's competition day two all around in the event finals and of course the national team will be named as well so lots of exciting gymnastics here in kentucky yeah saturday you know we're going to be back we're going to cover those the women yep. right i mean Senior they're women. they're decent they're they're actually pretty good in the world i think they've won a couple of gold medals hey we're going to have an olympic champion maybe not two we thought we're going to have two but Suni Lee, we saw her training today. Yep. She looks amazing. She is from my home state of Minnesota, which helps be amazing, just being from the great state of Minnesota. But it's going to be an awesome competition, 1 o'clock Eastern time, right back here for the senior women's competition. So any, you want to throw anything else? We're told we have as much time as we want. So Actually, they told us to wrap oh, they about did. a minute ago, so I don't know to, if you missed to that. To wrap that or that to wrap notice. it up, because that is a big difference. <laughs> All right. We got a lot of gymnastics is what we're trying to tell you. John and I can talk about this sport ad nauseum, and we'll, we'll spare you until the next broadcast. But thanks for hanging in there with us and learning some amazing gymnastics. Hopefully you learned some skills, some deductions, uh, great guests on the show, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. So long.